matter how many people I've seen in my simple life, when they went that direction and loved the social aspect, how they drifted away from that. The position in life was more important than love for God. Of course, saying that, somebody else would say, well, I like the political dominance or the political providence. And uh, so many people compromise here. They want to be somewhere in our social life and they want to be a mayor or they want to sit on the city council and, uh, and they just compromise their stand and love with God. Uh, and of course there are some people who just say, I don't care about anything, I just love myself. So they look into the mirror every morning and say, I love myself, nothing else matters. I do everything best for myself right now. And uh, it's my interests and nobody else matters. Uh, so where is God in all of that? Here's an interesting conversation that we all know very well as Jesus reacts with Peter right now. <coughs> and then he asks him three times uh, and he asks him this question, do you love me? Do you really love me? Do you truly love me? And of course, uh, you know that Jesus is asking him how many times? One, two, three times. And you know why he's asking him three times? Because just not too long ago, he rejected him how many times? One, two, three times, like this. And by the time the third time comes, uh, Peter is able to say, Lord, Lord, you know all things. You know all things. Uh, you know that I love you. And here is something that I want you to pay attention to. Jesus doesn't speak about love and helps us to die. Are you still with me? Because three years before that, when Andrew, his brother, introduced Peter to Jesus, that's when he was prepared to die. But now Jesus is asking, do you love me for another reason? I want you, Peter, to be prepared to live, to be prepared for this life. Woo we are still alive here. We are still breathing, we are still sitting here. Glory to his name. I believe it's a tragic in today's world uh, that many church members uh, are being prepared for death but not for life. Amen. We are prepared for death uh, when we accept Jesus Christ uh, as our Lord and our Savior. But we are prepared for life when we take Him as our Lord uh, and surrender our life to Him. Some of those songs are not just to sing uh, in the beginning of the service. But those are the words, that's the power that moves our life yes. every day. Hallelujah. Yeah. I want to live my life to the fullness, knowing that Christ is in the center, that he is the object of my life. Can you say amen? Yeah. Sometimes I feel that we major in getting people saved. Uh, do you know Jesus? Can you receive Jesus? Uh, and we pray with them. I accept Jesus to my life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving my sins. And we stop there. But there's every day that you can have victorious. Every day that you can become overpowered. Every day you can bring a new joy into your life when you surrender your life to Him. How about that? Amen. Amen. You see, there is a certain number one. I have three points, but I don't know how far we're going to get today. The first one is Satan's deception as to our, our affections. There's a word, contentment, and you always hear me talking about that. Because very often when we have somebody passing and we have a funeral or 
the casket is still open, we look at the person and we say, oh, how compared this person is. Well, of course he's got there, he's there. Yeah. What do you say? I mean, his spirit is gone. They just make up him, of course he looks good. But Satan comes into our lives this time when you're still alive and he is trying to tell you that you have to be content in everything that you do. Wow. It reminds me that the milk company that talks about milk, uh, that my milk is coming from the content cows. How about that? Did you see that? All the cows are content. How about that? Basically, what they are simply saying that contentment is a wonderful thing. That's what you need in your life, like this. And they are trying to deceive us that it's, uh, well, it's right here. What I'm trying to say, that contentment is bringing that idea that our affections should be only right here on the earthly things. Did you get it, what I just said? Right. So I'm content by putting my atten attention, by putting my feelings, by putting my joy, my love, today we talk about love, on those earthly things that surround us. Woo! That is. But the scripture is all contrary. The Bible says to us that we should put our affections on things above. Amen. That's what keeps us alive. That's what keeps us to move back. Remember how Satan deceived Solomon? My gosh, my gosh. God gave Solomon all the riches, all the wisdom, but everything everything he could want and desire he had at that just like that at his fingers everything everything right now fame houses riches uh, lands vineyards wisdom that uh, mm. all of that was at his disposition that uh, eventually his affection was on the woman he had hundreds of them, thousands for that matter, the scripture says. He could have any woman he desired. But yet, at the end of his life, he writes, all is vanity. Here is the man who had everything. <coughs> he writes, all is vanity. And all that. I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes it's just unbelievable. Because basically what he's trying to say, I tried everything in this life. Everything. I tried everything and nothing on earth satisfies. You come to the intersection and see your neighbor that drives better car, you say, wow, if only I could have that car. I tell you, you get that car and you still will not satisfied. Are you still with me? Right. Someone reminded me this week that a man who has everything, but God has nothing. Amen. But a man who has nothing but God, he has everything. Amen. Number two, why should Jesus be the object of my affection? And I'm trying to go past. I tell you why God desires to be first. God desires to be first. So oh. love for the Calvary. When you look at the cross, you should get excited and love God first in your life. Mm -hmm. Say, wow, I am alive because of what he has done for me. When he's asking Peter if he loves him, uh, Peter still could see the prince uh, in his nail, the, the, the nail prints in his hands. He's looking at Jesus, it just happened. It just happened right now. Jesus was crucified. And he rose again on the third day. Why? For you and for me. Think for a moment. If those nails hurt him. Can you imagine if the nails go through your hands? And now think about Jesus going with all that pain uh, to hell for one person. One person. And now multiply this pain uh, that the person experiences uh, going away from God to hell uh, by thousands and millions. 
The scripture says that Jesus took a sin. He took your sin. He took my sin. He took the sin upon himself. But the matter the scripture says that it was so big that for a moment God the Father had to turn away his face from Jesus. Can you imagine the pain? I don't think sitting here we don't even follow uh, the pain uh, of that that Jesus was experiencing. Yet he did it. Why? Because he loves you. Because we can sit here, get excited together. It's not just a day or some flowers or a candy. It's more than that. It's your life. It's my life. It's the destiny that we have. It is the words that we hear of Jesus saying, For God so loved the world. Jesus loves us. Wow. I should love him because of a Calvary. I should get excited because Jesus loves sinners. Are you hearing me? And there is only one way that we could be saved from hell and this is the way that Jesus took upon himself Jesus opened the door for us and he went through that pain so you can have that way available to you not just you but your friend your neighbor your family member as well that's what I'm saying Amen. he died on a cross for us so I don't want you to look at the cross in an abstract way. I don't want you to think it's not important. It's the most important part in our life. Amen. I love God yes. because of what he did for me and for you on Calvary. Thank you, Lord. I love God because of the daily blessings. How can you not be thankful to the Lord this morning? How can you not get excited about the one, the God of creation, the one that created you and me, his likeness and the image, and thank God we have a living relationship with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah says, your mercies are new every morning. Hallelujah. Every morning. Hallelujah. Every morning when you awake, we are surrounded by all the blessings of God. Hallelujah. I grew up in a full house. My mother the other day was still reminding me our house was a hotel. In those days when you have a visitor in the church, they all go to a pastor's home. So very often we were always secondary. The first slide of the bread was for the gas. We always were somewhere there, back in the kitchen, like this. But every day when I think about life, but I think the way God's hand shows me through all those points in my life like this, I get excited. What a blessing of God. You open your eyes this morning, you put a smile right now. Wow! I'm still alive. Glory to his name. Then I see Sister Rose coming by. And wow! What a person. What an incredible thankfulness all the time. When I think about some of those who just passed away, there's nothing else. They all went through tragedy and events in their lives and sicknesses and all that. But there was something that moved them from day to day. And what was that? They loved the Lord. Loved the Lord. Amen. They loved the Lord. Every day there's a new blessing. Every day when you open your eyes and look at your spouse, if you have one, whoo, you should get excited. In all those rocky places, God never, never disappoints you. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. God, God gave us His Son, Christ is for us. I think there's something wrong with the people that they cannot just uh, wake up in the morning and say, Praise God, thank God for this new day. Something is crazy, absolutely crazy. I got to love God because of heaven. Yes, Calvary, that's what it's all about. It takes care of my past. Yes, because of the present blessings, it takes care of today. But the most important thing is the future. And He's taking care of us. Look at that. We should get 
to love him. We should talk about love more and more because of heaven. What do I mean? Wow, heaven. Oh my my. Because of heaven that he takes care of us. Can you imagine a relationship that starts here and never ends? Can you imagine? You meet Jesus, eh? and now you think about your loved ones who love him as well. What a reunion it shall be. What a time the scripture says that we'll be able to recognize one another. We'll be like angels with the new resurrected bodies, eh? but you'll still be able to re recognize eh? and, uh, one another like this. Can you imagine that? Person who is a lost person, person without God. They have nothing to do. They are looking only forward to dying, to death. And we don't need to put our heads down. We keep our heads up. Right. We are looking into heaven, life forever, with our Lord Jesus. Uh, home, it's not here. Our home is in heaven, Amen. with Christ, with the loved ones. Uh, one of the missionaries we were talking to the other day <coughs> works in the Asian countries is uh, not very open to the scripture but God opened the door and, and this lady went to a visit hospital a 15 year old kid was basically so skinny, so sick, so looking bad he just said, uh, when you looked at him he barely looked like he was maybe 11, 12 years old raised in a very strict religious home and in your face in your face like you know what is confession, what is uh, sacrament and all that kind of stuff. But he had no understanding about the personal relationship or knew very little about Christ. But something touched her heart and she was able to spend some time and she started bringing him flowers and she started bringing him candies like this. So think about that. They were he was able to bring that stuff <coughs> into the into the hospital's room right there and by each visit he was more and more open and he was listening to what she was saying and she was repeating him that God loves you so much even at this condition right now God is able to heal you God is able to restore you now but I want you to understand that the love of God is more powerful than anything else that you can experience in this life that it is and finally after one of those meetings, she comes and she can't believe it. His faith is glowing. His personality is totally changed. He's still in the bed, but he was kind of trying to sit down like this, and he's looking at her and says, wow, what happened? And he said, my friend, I tell you what happened. I always knew Jesus was necessary, but I didn't know until yesterday that he was enough. Jesus is enough yesterday. Jesus is enough today. And Jesus is enough tomorrow. Amen. I know the lady very well, so she was telling me, you know what happened? I prayed with him one more time. He was resurrected. At the end of the week, he went home. Now he's a young man participating in the life of the church. Right there in Asia, how about that? Isn't God good? Amen. But God is enough. Jesus is enough in your life, in every situation. You can recognize this in different moments in your life because we have different journeys, you know, different steps in you know, our lives. You could just recognize that. So get it is. I love the Lord because of Calvary. I love the Lord because of the blessings. I love the Lord because of heaven. And one more thing, and then we're going to pray. I'm thinking right now because you know what? How can we prove our love for Christ? And remember, I'm talking about being an object of our love. Number one, like I said in the very beginning, giving you my testimony, you have to live your life to the best of your knowledge and relationship with Him. So you may think that nobody sees you. You may think that you are far away from home, but God knows you. And there might be other people who are just looking at you and say, Hey, minister. 
Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. That's it. So don't forget that you cannot be indifferent Christian. That, that kind of a cold mentality will never bring anybody to love God. But when you smile, like Linda does, when she goes to say something about that, mm -hmm. everybody draws to her. She doesn't need to say too much like that. People need to see that life is beautiful because Christ is in the center mm -hmm. like that. You don't need to say much. They should be able to see it right now. Many years ago, when I still was in Connecticut, I met one pastor, a famous pastor, and he told me that he had three kids, and all of them were boys, like this. And he was a peculiar brother, he was kind of a tall guy, like this, pastor of a beautiful church, and I still can remember we had a tremendous time together. But he was a nice reddish guy. His hair was red. And of course, I forget about the whole thing. And after many, many years, I was somewhere else. The other side for them, other on the other side in New Jersey. And I was preaching somewhere, and there is also a guest together with me. I'm looking at this guy. I think I know the guy. And I'm looking at the guy, and it wasn't the same. He had two guys with him. I'm looking at this. What is this? Who is this guy walking with those two guys next to him like this? I'm looking at those guys. What is this? They all look the same. And I recognize eventually who was that? That was that preacher. And I'm looking at those two guys. Before I came close to them, I already knew who were those two guys with that guy. You know who they were? His sons. Oh. And how did I learn that? Because they all had the right hair. <laughs> Can you imagine what happens in the other community? When you go around, and they look at you and they say, wow! What an incredible Jesus you serve. I want to serve the same Jesus that you do. Can they recognize Jesus in your my life? And I'm not talking about the red color of that. I'm talking about your life. I'm talking about your lifestyle. Those are the real things in our life. Can you Love God in such a way that your life is an exemplary to someone else. Sad story because I also heard this. One of the preachers was saying, you may be going to heaven, but someone else may go to hell because you do not believe as you should. Did you get it what I just said? And sad story, I had this example in my life. We had a guy that was, I mean, my gosh, we, we had Sunday morning, Sunday evening, those days, services full of house, full of house, always full house like this. And sometimes the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit were operating and this guy would stand up and just speak in tongues and all that kind of stuff. And God would give prophetic words sometimes and, uh, and then uh, interpretation and things of that. But unfortunately, I got a telephone call from his office. He was a tracker. He said, you would not believe what happens when he came to the office. It's almost like hell coming into the office. Mm -hmm. The way he starts speaking, the way he starts swearing, the way he starts moving with the people, getting angry like this, all the way to the owner of the whole company like this. And I just put my head down when they were calling me and telling me about that. Because here he was yesterday doing all that stuff in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And today the lifestyle is proving who he is. Jesus says, not by the hand. Are you still with me? But by the fruit. It's not the beginning, Jesus says, but the end. Good and faithful servant. Are you catching what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Don't bite your tongue. I mean, something can happen. We all. We all have moments in our lives, that's why we repent, that's why we cry out like this. But make sure that your life is an example of it. Make sure that somebody watches you and say, wow, 
I want to be like this person. Also, Paul says, you know, if nothing else, do what I do. Follow me. I told you this story too. I used to have. I told you about this just the other day. I used to have somebody in Portland, very well educated, like this, and he always questioned God and the existence of Creator and everything. And I was so bold in those days. I said, "You see, if you want to believe in God, look at me. You should be able to see God." Mm. He actually did stop many times, as I repeated this again and again, every time. Mm -hmm. My good friend, when we moved away, mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. But that's how your life should be. You should be able to say, wow, if you have a hard time to realize that God is alive, look at my life. Mm -hmm. Look at me, like this. So what are we talking here? When we're talking about love. We're talking about an object of your love. We are talking right now about something incredible that God has done for you and for me. There is one more thing that I heard, and I'm going to finish with that, but years, 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 years ago, there was a guy that moved from overseas to this nation, and he found himself in Pennsylvania. Yeah, my brother. Pennsylvania. And what that city did, that city didn't know how to help him in those days, but they, they found three dollars and sixty cents we are i even have the number three dollars and sixty cents and they gave him every week so he can buy groceries so can you imagine today i go to the store i told you this the other day 127 dollars and i came home and i said what did i buy there was nothing there I said, what am i gonna eat three dollars and sixty cents and he was so overwhelmed that he went to the town and he said I want to do something so he asked for the sweeper and he started sweeping the streets of the, of the town he was so excited that the town blessed him so he can eat every week like this and he wanted to repay he wanted to do something Jesus says, I did not come to be served, but to do what? To serve. So we're going to sit and wait for something to happen. We're going to have a couple extra funerals, and it's going to be over. Are you still with me? Amen. That is. And I believe God is not yet over with us. Do you love me? I just heard about one lady in my old city. She's 111 years old, mm -hmm. older than your mother. Yeah, one six. That was wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. She come to the window, then the whole orchestra playing, and I've seen all of them in front of me like this. 111, and all the marbles are still here, still <laughs> function, still aware, and everything that's going on. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. All things are possible mm -hmm. with God. Amen. Do you love me? Jesus is saying, and I'm not talking about accepting me into your heart, but I'm talking about having a victorious life every day. I'm not saying crying because I didn't get chocolates or I feel lonely right now. I'm saying having victory in those relationships, having victory on your job. I'm saying I wake up in the morning and I say, I rejoice in the Lord because of Calvary. Mm -hmm. I rejoice in the Lord for all the blessings that I have. Mm -hmm. I have some, some, somebody this morning said, you look good. I said, praise God, I look good every day. <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm saying? Can you get excited? Can you praise God? Can you say, wow, what a blessing I get every day. It's a new day. Yes. Every day God is blessing. And it's not end here. Remember, cemetery is not the end. Mm -hmm. We have had. So we are looking up. In the midst of the situations, we are looking up. Man. So let's stand <laughs> together, take a moment right now. Yes. Hallelujah. And on this Valentine's weekend, how about that? It's a long week like this. For a moment, forget. For a moment, just think it's you 
and the object of your life. What is the object of your life? Then you say, Jesus, I received you, but I want you to be my Lord. Be my Lord of every department in my life. Every part that the other eye does not see, that maybe my relative, my spouse, does not even know about. I want you to be the Lord. Can we bow our heads for a moment? Just, just close our eyes for a moment. And as you're sitting here, can you say, I know, Pastor, could you just pray with me? I, I, I need more of the love. I need to understand. Yes, somebody else. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Our gracious Father, here we are. We're just in a simple way standing before you. We just hear almost your voice as you are interacting with Peter. Do you love me? And I don't mean just this, this physical only aspect. But do you truly love me? Am I truly the Lord of your life on Tuesday or Thursday or Friday? In the moments when I cry, in the moments when I rejoice, in the moments when it's, it's, it's painful and it hurts. Can I say I love you? Can I say like this young fellow in the Asian's hospital, my Lord, so far away, who was able to recognize and smile, Jesus is enough. I didn't know it, but now I know. Jesus is enough. I thank you this morning that as we are conscious before you, we can say God is enough yes. in our lives. So bless my brothers and sisters. Bless us this week, my Lord. We are excited right now because we are alive and we know that you love us. I thank you, my Lord, that it's going to spill out on someone else. I thank you right now that our lives can be an example to someone else and touch someone else in the name of Jesus. Bless us, Lord, I pray right now. In your precious holy name, do you say amen? amen? Well, here we are. We made it. Look at that. We made it. God bless.